was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. Saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be you clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. It's the same Jesus we worship this morning. It's the same Jesus of whom we sang that the saints and the elders bow before him. And the angels bow before him. It's the same Jesus who saved your soul. It is the same Jesus who cleansed and made you whole. It is not another, it is the same Jesus who gave you life and hope. For after the grave, it is the same Jesus who touched this leper. Uh, do you understand that? He salved Jesus. But here the man angeraak het. En hy was onmiddellik genees. Dis die selfde Jesus. Dis nie een ander Jesus. Dis die selfde Jesus. Wat in ons midde is vanochtend. Dis die selfde Jesus. Halleluja. En die woord van God sê, hy is die selfde. Die selfde, yesterday. Today and forever and he is still touching lepers. Ah, I said he's still touching lepers. Yes, we were lepers. And he touched us. He dared to touch us. Who wants to touch such filth and scum and wickedness and gross immorality of every kind and every sort? Who wants to touch that? Not Buddha. Muhammad would never do it. And neither would Confucius or Zoroaster. Neither would as, uh, 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 Plato or Nostradamus. The great minds of this world. They would never touch a leper. But Jesus touched a leper. And last week we looked at the first criteria if you want to receive a touch from Jesus. The first criteria is to what? Number one, admit your condition. Admit your condition. Unclean, unclean, that's your condition. Every sinner's condition is that of being unclean, unclean. I mentioned last week how that we have cheapened grace. We've cheapened it. We have cheapened the grace of Jesus. We call people to a life of success and happiness in Jesus. But we don't make them aware of their condition. Evangelist, they must know their condition. 
or they would never, never appreciate the cure. If they don't understand their disposition and their condition, they will never appreciate the provision. They must admit their condition. Unclean, unclean, said the leper. He admitted his condition. The second qualification for receiving a touch from Jesus is to humble your heart. Admit your condition. Number two, humble your heart. If you want a touch from Jesus, not only as it pertains salvation, but also as it pertains everything else after your salvation. If you want deliverance, just one touch from Jesus and you can be delivered. But you have to admit your condition. And number two, humble your heart. Look at um, the word of God says, it says, came to pass, this is verse 12, Luke chapter 5. A man full of leprosy, seeing Jesus, what? He fell on his face and pleaded with Jesus. He did what? He fell. And last week I said, what was left of his face? But he fell on his face, humbled himself, lied prostrate before God. And pleaded with him. Here we get a picture of the, the heart of this leper. We get a picture of the heart of this leper. He falls prostrate before the Son of God. And we say that this leper put his whole soul in the dirt before Jesus. He worshipped Jesus as the only possible source of his healing. He worshipped Jesus. The lesson is clear, saints of God. Jesus' healing touch does not come to the proud. Jesus' healing touch does not come to those who are arrogant and haughty and high-minded. The touch of Jesus comes to those who will bow themselves low and prostrate themselves unashamed, unmoved by who's watching and who's looking. I need a touch. I need a touch. I have to prostrate my soul in the dirt. Make a fool of myself just so I can have one touch. The reason why some of you have not experienced the touch of Jesus is because you think too highly of yourself. The reason why we are not experiencing a touch from God is because we're not willing to crucify self. The only high place that self belongs is on the cross. It's the only high place we belong. Remember the cross was hoisted, it was lifted up. The only high place that we should be taking as Christians is that of Calvary. That of being crucified with Christ. If ever we are going to receive a touch from God, saints, it's going to take you to get off of your high horse. I always say there's no room for big shots in Jesus' kingdom. There's only one big shot here. There's only one big shot in the kingdom. There's no room for high-minded people in the kingdom.
O, my soet gaan vuil raak as ek nou moet prostrate. Dan moet ek weer clean as toe vat en as weer nog 200 rand. Isn't that worth the touch of Jesus? But church, what qualified this leper for a touch from the Lord? He humbled his heart. All your life, you'll just be going through the, the rituals and the traditions of church. And you'll never experience the touch of Christ. You need it. Don't tell me you don't. Some of you are so dried up. A person will swear that you are an autumn leaf that is about to fall to the ground and get crumpled up and just be blown away because you are not willing to humble your heart to fall from yourself. And while you're being full of yourself, the master is passing by right past you. Humble yourself. Kneel by the grace. Want Jesus on moet jou daar. Hallelujah. Kneel at the cross because Jesus will meet you there. He only meets those who are knelt down. Humbled. Hallelujah. I can't go through the there's a word I'm looking for man. The, the routines. I can't go through that. I can't live my Christian life like that. I need just one touch from the Lord. And it takes me to admit my condition and secondly to humble my heart. And that only comes, saints of God, as we humble our heart before Him in realization that He is our only Hey, Jesus is our only hope. If you haven't yet realized that Jesus is your only hope, oh man, I pray you soon will. Amen. He's my beloved. Think about it. Think about it. Your job can be here today and gone tomorrow. You can't hope in that. A family member is here today and gone tomorrow. You can hope in him or her. Your business can be here today and gone tomorrow. You can't hope in that. You can only hope in Christ. Only he is immortal. Only he is immortal. Invincible. Everlasting to everlasting. Admit your condition, humble your heart. What's a third qualification that we see? What is the third qualification that we see? If we want to touch from Jesus, we got to what? We got to believe in Jesus. We got to what? Believe. Look at the verse 12 of Luke again. Lord, if you will, you can. Lord, if you will, then you can. Hallelujah. I don't doubt that you can. But Lord, will you? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And sometimes the Lord doesn't heal us. We believe that he can. But will he? Yeah, we believe he can. That's faith. We believe in Jesus. And even when he doesn't heal me, I still believe he can. <laughs> Amen. Somebody say, if he will, he can. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. That's faith. That's faith. Believe in Jesus. The leper displayed a remarkable kind of faith. He never went to Bible school. 
I don't think he did. He never sat at the feet of great rabbis of his day. I don't believe he did. All that he had, all that he could express and display was faith. He admitted his condition. I'm unclean. And now he gets to the point where he believes that Jesus can. He admits his condition. He humbles his heart and he says, I believe. If you can, you will. And, or rather, if you will, you can. And Mark indicates that he repeated this several times. How incredible this picture of the prostrate leper. The man lay plat op sy mag voor die Heere. And in a coarse voice, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. I'm sure he has heard of Jesus' miraculous power and believe that Jesus was the all-powerful son of the living God. He believed that Jesus had the power to heal him. He says in verse 12, you can make me clean. He believed that Jesus could heal him. Yes, even him. He had come to realize that the scribes and the Pharisees could not help him. Uh, the Sangomas and the witch doctors and the Nyangas and the, and the, the, the faith healers, uh, they can't help you. They will only exacerbate your problem so that you can keep coming back and pay more money. They can't help you. You'll be surprised how many Christians are visiting psychologists. You'll be surprised how many Christians have put their confidence in the flesh. Because they're not willing to admit their condition, not to a man, but to Jesus. He had come to realize that no one else could help him. That the priests and the Levites couldn't help him. And the only hope for his life was just one touch from Jesus. He knew it's only going to take a clump uh, rigmaroles. It's a lot of rigmaroles, a lot of incantations and, and, and words spoken into the atmosphere and all of this. I declare and decree. And no, just a touch. Just a touch. I mean, things don't want to come right for you because you have not been touched. You have not followed the example of the leper. The only cure for a sin sick heart is just one touch from Jesus. If you want the healing touch of Jesus, you must admit your condition, humbly, or believe in Jesus. How do you get a transforming touch from Jesus? First of all, request it. Remember we said that last week? Request a touch. And how do you request the touch? Admit your condition, humble your heart, and believe in Jesus. That's all part of the leper's request. In his request, he admitted his condition. In his request, he humbled himself. In his request, he believed. That was request a touch. Now, the second thing that you must remember if you want to get the transforming touch from Jesus is not only to request the touch, but to receive a touch. <laughs> receive a touch. Verse 13. Still looking at Luke's uh, rendition. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And as that leper lay 
at the feet of Jesus Christ with the whole multitude looking on. Can you imagine the scene? Hundreds, maybe thousands, looking at this dirty, stinking, rotten, despised and rejected leper flat on his stomach. I can just imagine the, the religious leaders and how they were snickering and sneering. <laughs> you think he'll get his miracle from this Jesus? I mean, the, oh, religion is an ugly thing. Religion is an ugly thing. But Jesus wasn't concerned about them. He looked at this leper. Jesus looked at him. And Jesus was moved. Jesus was touched by this man's heart. He was moved with compassion. It means Jesus was stirred in the innermost part of his being. The word compassion, it is a word that means to feel the pain of another person. Compassion. And this is what happened when Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. It was unbelievable. You could probably hear a gasp go through the multitude. When Jesus, oh, he's touching a leper that is forbidden by the law. Doesn't this rabbi know that he too will be considered to be unclean? They could not believe that Jesus was touching him. A leper. A dirty, despicable, and despised leper. It may have been about, say, 10 years since the leper had been touched by any other human hand. Probably about 10 years, maybe, maybe more, that a human hand at last touched him. And here, the hand of Jesus Maybe he was a father and he had once known the embrace of his children and his wife. According to Jewish law, no one could come closer than about two meters to this leper. Social distancing, it's not new. The leper knew all too well about social distancing. Two meters. Isn't that the same metrage they used during COVID? Two meters. That was the distance we had to, the leper had to keep from other people or them from him. But Jesus. But she, oh, how can you compare Jesus to Muhammad? Oh, my Muslim friend watching this. How can you compare? Jesus to Muhammad. They do. They even say he's greater than Jesus. Oh, man. I described leprosy to you last week. How could Jesus touch him? And when it says Jesus touched him, touched him, the word touch expresses more than superficial contact. That's not what it's that's not the word touch in this context. The Greek word that is used for touch. Is translated to take hold of. Jesus took hold of the slipper. We have the idea Jesus just took his hand and laid it on his head. No, Jesus laid hold of him. In the week I watched a video by Jim Simbala. I think that's how you pronounce his surname or Kimbala. 
He's a pastor of Brooklyn Tabernacle in the United States. And he does a I, th I think I sent it on the WhatsApp audio clip, sermon clips. Where there was just like that brother who walked in now. He stood there, the pa pastor Jim stood there and he looked at this brother. And this brother looked at him as if to say, please call me up and pray for me. And he kind of, you know, tried to divert his own attention away from that brother because that brother's look, they didn't look too adorable and lovable. And the Spirit of God just kept on pointing him back to this, this man sitting there in third or fourth row or whatever. And then eventually he called his brother up. And he said, he just standing two meters or whatever away from that brother, the stench that came from this guy, it's, it was a combination of feces and urine and perspiration and street all mixed into one. He said, I could not stand the smell. I could not go and hug him. I didn't want to stand close to him. The smell was horrendous. And then the Spirit of God spoke to Pastor Jim. And said, if you do not embrace him, love him, then I cannot use you. He says, because that is how the world smells in my nostrils. That's how the sin of the world comes up in my nostrils. Yet, I gave my son. And he said he went down that platform, took those steps down the stage. He went. He held him. He repented before God. And he held him. And then he said this. I've never, after, after holding him, embracing him, showing him the love of Christ, I've never smelled a sweeter fragrance. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. May God help us. See that brother walked in here now. Did any one of us go and lay just a hand? Just to, you can see he's not doing well. Did anyone go and sit next to him and just put your arm around him? We're so full of ourselves, eh? Because we sprayed the best cologne this morning and we don't want it to be tainted by someone else's not so good smell. What has happened to Christians? What has happened to us? What has happened? But Jesus is not like us. And this is the problem that Gandhi had with Christians. Mahatma Gandhi. He said, I admire your Christ. Something to this effect. I'm paraphrasing. He said, I admire your Christ, but I don't admire you. What was he saying? He was saying you are so unlike Jesus. You will claim to follow him. And don't just hug someone when other Christians are looking. Someone who's not smelling good, looking good. When you're on your own, do it. Not when people are looking. You want to now show how like Jesus you really are. No. Beloveds, do you think that this young man walked in here by accident? Do you see this young man is not okay? Do you think the Spirit of God might have led him here? I sure would want to believe that. So I want us to go to him right now. I just feel the Spirit of God. Can the brothers just go to that young man? Go, don't let him come in front. Go to where he is. Please, and let us just love him. Love him. You might not have the words, just love him.